Hi, it's Midnight Mule, and today I thought I would give a brief update on the coronavirus whiteboard we have downstairs that I showed you a couple of weeks ago. And I thought maybe I should explain how this Aspie put the chart together and why I've made it the way I have. And then maybe I thought I'd like to look at a handful of the countries, see how they're doing, and then we could make a prediction for them for the future, which would be wildly out. I know nothing about medicine. I'm completely unqualified to talk about any of this. So you should believe none of this other than this Aspie likes numbers. So if I, here's a whiteboard, here's a photograph of the whiteboard from this morning. We've added a few countries, well, quite a few countries since we last looked at it. I only add countries that have got at least a thousand infections in total. Now I need to be careful because where I've put my head just now keeps getting in the way. So I'll try and remember to drag it around, but I also know that I'm bound to forget sometimes. So to start off, just a quick explanation of what, how we're used to seeing graphs. So we often see values on the Y, time on the X, and then we have a chart. So this might be, for example, your savings account or the value of something. So generally speaking, we're very used to seeing charts like this, which means the top right is the good corner and the lower left to an extent is the naughty corner because we're starting off there and over time we generally want things to get better. I'm aware some charts of course go the other direction but this was just my thinking on when I was making this chart with all the different countries and coronavirus. So the driver was the good corner in the top right, the naughty corner in the lower left and we want countries to move from the naughty corner up to the good corner. So that means infections, when we're talking about infections, the number, whether the number of infections today was greater or less than the previous day, the larger numbers need to be on the left and the lower numbers on the right, which of course is unusual for a chart, but it means we can keep the naughty corner down low here. And it's the same with deaths. The higher number of deaths is in the lower left and the lower numbers upper right. So I've superimpose the numbers on this chart here. So naughty corner down here, if you have four or five, if four or five of the last five days, the infections has increased and the deaths are increased, you're down here. The good corner, if in the last five days, you've had zero or one greater days of infections and greater days of death, you're up here. So if we chart on the grid now, just to make it clear, daily infection count increased five or four you're over in this column three here two here one or zero the last column and the daily death count increased bad down here good up here i've probably labored the point a bit here i know <laughs> just wanted to make it clear so this is now with our chart a photograph of a chart with a number superimposed on top of it and this is where we are as of this morning which is based on yesterday's figures and the figures before that. So let's have a look at, this is the center of gravity approximately of where the countries are at the moment. And if we compare that to where they were a couple of weeks ago, by my estimation of just drawing it roughly where it should go, I think you can see the mass is gradually moving in the right direction. Now during time as we're doing each day a number of countries tend to get better a number tend to get worse a number tend to stay where they are but there is a general trend something else to do with the trends that's interesting is when it comes to monday tuesday numbers tend to be slightly suppressed perhaps because reporting is a bit less at the weekend maybe not all the authorities all the hospitals get all the numbers through on time but it's not unusual for monday and tuesday to be slightly lower than thursday friday but of course, this particular virus isn't going to care what day of the week it is. So that's a bit interesting. Now, if I was doing this exactly for a company or something, I would probably have done a rolling average over maybe the last 10 days, possibly seven, no fewer than this. But we're doing this chart just for our own interest. Uh, so it's fine. It's just to see a basic trend. So I'm getting the numbers off this website, the Worldometer. The address is worldometer.info forward slash coronavirus and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this site and the way it works the way I'm using it 
I put my head there. I'm looking at the United Kingdom for this example. I look at the last six days and then we're going to count how many of the last six days there's been an increase. And then it's the same idea for the deaths in the United Kingdom. So I'm going to disappear for now. So over here, this is the new infections. And as you'll see, went up one day. I've made it red. Red is bad. Down, up, down, and then slightly up. So infections increased three times in the past five days. As for the deaths in the United Kingdom, we've had an increase, decrease, increase, decrease, decrease. So deaths increased two times in the past five days. So therefore on our chart here, infections three, deaths two. So there's the United Kingdom. And that's where we're appearing. The United Kingdom has been right down here in the naughty corner before. And then we stayed in this column, which is the bad column for quite a while. We've gradually moved across. I suspect we're going to be around this middle part for quite a while. Now look at some of the other countries of interest. China, of course, they started it off as far as all the statistics where we believe it started from. We're in the same box as China, but of course China have far fewer infections officially than we do. I just realized my head's out of it. There we go, I'm back again. They have far fewer infections than we're having. Now in the last few days, their infections is gradually going up. They say a large number of these are being imported. So people flying home to China from countries where the infection exists. But that's only a large number of them. There are still some home infections happening. Going back a few days, they announced they had a day with no new infections. So infections are gradually on the rise, but they have, they're very intent with their lockdown, very, very strict. And that's how they've managed to suppress it so much. Another one of interest called South Korea. They got hit early on, but they were very, very much on top of the whole infection thing. So they did this thing called tracing. So when somebody had an infection, they would then work out one where they got it from and then two tested family members and other people who'd be in contact with the new person who's got the infection and they would test those. So they were doing way more testing as were China compared to nearly all other countries, including the vast majority of the European countries. So the South Korean chart, this is the last six days over here. And you can see there's been an increase, decrease, decrease, and then two increases here. But they're very much lower than when they're having their larger problems, which is up here. Now they were only getting only around 800 a day at their worst. And yet they have a similar sized population to Spain and Italy. They're all around the 50, 60 million mark. Now what's interesting is South Korea, once they got the numbers right down here, we're talking 100 or so infections a day, they've been lifting the restrictions, but they're still doing masses of testing. There's still quite a degree of lockdown going on. Now Spain, as of this morning, and Italy, both announced they're lifting some of their restrictions. So I believe it's the construction industry and some of the manufacturing industry. They're now going to be going back to work. So uh, remember South Korea, they're small compared to where they were. And now <laughs> this is Spain. Yes, Spain are slightly lower than where they were, but they're marginally lower and they're still getting 5,000 or perhaps down to about 3,000 new infections a day and they're not doing the same amount of infection. They're not doing the same tracing as South Korea was doing and now they're lifting the restrictions and Italy is very much looking the same. That's a photo from our whiteboard by the way in case you think the flag's not a very good picture. This is Italy now the last six days so the last five days progression. That's where they were at the peak. They're also in a bad state and they're lifting their restrictions. Now, <laughs> disclaimer, as I said before, I know nothing about virology and all these things. They will have statisticians and they will have um, experts in medicine, etc., saying to the government, presumably, it's OK to think about lifting the restrictions. However, Spain and Italy are financially in very poor positions at the moment, and this is I believe massively driven by the fact that they know 
one, they're in a bad economic place, and two, the longer the lockdown, the worse their economy is going to get. So they all governments have to get their balance right between lifting the lockdown too soon, but then having it in place for too long, and the economy is just in too bad a position. But the gamble is, from an economic point of view, if you release it too soon, the lockdown, infections are going to go up again, and the lockdown's going to be in longer in total than if you could have kept it down. So the United Kingdom, we're a couple of weeks behind Italy and Spain regarding the infection. So what happens there the next two or three weeks, I think, is going to affect what the United Kingdom are going to do. But the impact of releasing this lockdown, I suspect we may not know for another two or three weeks. So it's possible the United Kingdom will lift the lockdown before we see Italy and Spain go the wrong direction. I know nothing about this. I could be completely wrong. Maybe Spain and Italy will keep decreasing. Everything will be fine. The economy will pick up. I'm just looking at it from a interesting numbers point of view here. Austria, their population I think is around 10 million, maybe slightly more. But they've been over here in this good column for quite a while. And their infection rate, look, we're down here in like the 300s or so, which is, they're kind of, they're suppressing it okay. As far as I'm aware, Austria aren't lifting the lockdown. Over in, who's this? Russia. Now, Russia are behind other people in the game. I'm going to disappear. Nope, there we go. So Russia are still on the increase. They're about half the size of America for population, but over a vast distance. So it'd be interesting, as well as tragic, to see where they're going, at what point they're going to release their lockdown. But like China and South Korea, you can be sure that Russia will be very strict with implementing the lockdown and saying what people can and can't do. One last one I'm going to look at here is the United States of America, because I'm sure some people will be very interested in the United States. Now, technically, of course, you can see that in the two column, which is better than United Kingdom, Japan, China, and for deaths are in zero one. So have a look at what's behind these numbers, because of course they're having the most infections per day. So this chart is looking at progression and trends rather than absolute figures. So here's the US. I can disappear again. Yes, they've come down slightly, but not much at all. And if I just zoom in on, so that's new cases. This is deaths. This is the daily death. I want to zoom in on here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they have decreased, decreased. Oops, gone up, decreased, decreased. So they have only had one increase in the last five days. That's true. But they are still in a very, very bad position. Now, Trump, I believe, has said he's going to keep the lockdown in place at least for the end of April. But they are in, they've released trillions in new stimulus and their economy is going to be massively hit. So we've got, we've got the tension of not wanting the virus to get out of control. And of course, the longer the virus is in their community, the more people it affects, that affects the economy. But if you're strict against the virus for too long, then people aren't earning and they're not paying the taxes. And you've also got all the extra funding you have to do on the back of it. Anyway, that was just a brief update of where we are at the moment. I find these things interesting. Hopefully some of you do to disclaimer as at the beginning, I know nothing about these things. It's just how this Aspie is looking at these numbers. Thank you.